Dear students, let's quickly discuss what do you mean by Dutch auction. Actually, Dutch auction, which is a new area in AFM, Dutch auction is the process to find a suitable price at which company wants to sell the shares. What is uh, that? How that process works? We'll be discussing that numerically, inshallah. Now, let us quickly discuss what are the advantages of Dutch auction. Number one, there will be no involvement of underwriter, which means transaction costs will be much, much lower, cheaper than IPO. Second, it reduces it reduces the risk of underpricing, which we have seen in case of LinkedIn. Third, in Dutch auction, basically, retail investors like you and me, we can compete against institu institutional investors, means like banks, insurance companies, mutual funds. Now, what are the disadvantages of Dutch auction? One, you will not be getting a control through the, through auction, obviously. Second, actually, the retail investor like you and me, obviously, we cannot conduct at the same level the due diligence which institutional investor they can do it. It means still there's a risk for the retail investors. There's a risk. Still, there's a risk. We might end up by paying higher prices which means there's a possibility as soon as we realize that we have paid higher prices as soon as the trading commences we will start selling the shares then the share price will drop so quickly i discuss what is dutch auction what are the advantages and disadvantages everything is already written here dutch auction is the process to find a suitable price at which company wants to sell shares dutch auction benefits no involvement of underwriter, which makes Dutch auction cheaper than IPO. Dutch auction reduces the underpricing risk, reduces the risk of risk of underpricing, which we have seen in case of LinkedIn IPO. Dutch auction allows retail investor compete against institutional investor, retail investor like you and me people. Disadvantages of Dutch auction. Auction-based pricing will not give you the investor gives a less control. Retail investors are less sophisticated than institutional investors and may not conduct sufficient due diligence on the issuing company. They face the risk of paying higher price. As a result, they may attempt to liquidate their holding as soon as trading commences, cause the share price to plump, to reduce. Now let us see numerically how Dutch auction actually works. Assuming company A incorporation is using Dutch auction to price its shares for an IPO, the company wants to sell how many shares? 500. Bidder. Investor A places a bid for 225 shares and the price $300 per share. Investor B places bid for 50 shares and he's willing to pay you $450 per share. Investor C, 500 shares, the price is 100. Investor D, 85, the price is 200. Investor E, 125 shares, the price is 150. Investor F, 15 shares and 120. We need to decide the share price under Dutch auction. Now listen, the Dutch auction process will always start from the highest bid price. The highest bid price is coming from investor B. Question one. So Dutch auction will always start from the highest bid price and the highest bid price is coming from Mr. B. Investor B is willing to subscribe how many shares? 50 shares. Obviously, if he subscribes 50, so still 450 are remaining. So remaining shares are 450. Now let's go to the second highest bid price. The second highest bid price is coming from investor A, who is willing to subscribe 225 shares. The price is $300 per share. 225. So remaining shares are 225. Remaining shares. Okay. Now let's see the third highest bid price third highest bid price is coming from investor d willing to subscribe 85 for 
per two hundred dollars. Okay, eighty five. Investor D. Investor D is willing to subscribe eighty five. So two twenty five minus eighty five gives me one forty. It's still one forty remaining shares. Now let's go for the fourth highest bid price. Fourth. The fourth is uh, Mr. E, 125 shares willing to pay us 150 per share. E, investor E, 140 minus 125 is still 15 remaining shares. Now let's see, fifth highest bid price is coming from Mr. F, Willing to subscribe 15 shares for dollar 120. Investor F. Investor F. Remaining shares are 15. He is willing to subscribe 15. So re zero remaining shares. Zero remaining shares. Now, now actually, we have come to the conclusion at which price organization should sell its shares so that all the 500 shares will be subscribed. We will always start from the highest bid price, but under Dutch auction, the price at which all 500 shares will be subscribed, that is the price 120. 120. 120 is the price at which all the shares will be subscribed because it means when you decide the price 120, Obviously, Mr. F will get the shares and rest of all the investors, E, D, A, B, they will be willing, more than willing to subscribe the shares because they will get, logically, they will be get subscribing the shares lower than what they actually bid for. So the suitable price at which all the 500 shares will be subscribed is 120. So Dutch auction price is dollar 120 now basically now the question is what about what about mr investor c actually the investor c has offered as a very low price and before reaching mr c we have already sold 500 shares so simply the suitable price is 120 and the c has offered us even lower than the 120 that is why c is not coming into that dutch auction C will not be subscribing any shares because we will not give any shares to Mr. C. Now let's see one more question. Uh, same requirement like in question one, still the company is same, everything is same and the company wants to issue 500 shares. Investor A places a bid for 125 shares willing to pay us $300, let's say per share, obviously. It means question two. Investor a is willing to subscribe 125 shares so remaining shares are 375 remaining shares okay miss now in let's see the second highest bid price the second highest bid price is that's uh, i would say coincident that the price from investor b and c is same investor b is willing to pay us dollar 200 per share and the investor c is also willing to pay us dollar 200 per share investor b is interested to subscribe 275 shares investor c is willing to subscribe 225 shares now we don't have any other price it means if we decide the price 200 so 200 is logically the price at which company can easily sell 500 shares even company can sell more than 500 shares at 200 price why how look at this investor a is willing to subscribe 125 shares at 300 dollars investor b is willing to subscribe 275 shares and he has offered 200 dollars per share investor c is willing to subscribe 225 shares if we decide the price dollar 200 which we will obviously we are deciding right now because that is the suitable price at which company can easily even sell shares more than 500 but we don't want to sell more than 500 now what should be done 
if you come across a scenario where people are willing to subscribe more than what company has decided to issue the shares then you have to calculate the percentage and then you will be issuing the shares according to the percentage according to the proportion if i add all of these i'll get 625 company actually wants to share issue 500 shares so simply 500 divided by 625 into 100 i'll i'm getting 80 percent so in question two what is happening at a price dollar 200 company has become in a position where they can sell more than 500 shares but they don't want to sell more than 500 shares so in that case you have to cal simply calculate a percentage then every investor will get the shares in dutch auction according to that percentage which means that in second question investor a will not be getting 125 shares he will be getting 80 percent of that which is 100 investor b is willing to subscribe 275 but he will not be getting 275 he'll be getting 80 percent of that if i which is 220 investor c Two twenty five into zero point eight, two twenty five into this one eighty. So simply five hundred shares. So in question two, actually, what happened? You come across a situation where we have decided the Dutch auction price in question two that is two hundred dollar. But the problem is that two hundred dollars company could even sell more than five hundred shares, but they don't want to sell it. So in that case when you come across a situation where you can sell even more than the required shares then you have to simply calculate a percentage issued shares divided by the total number of shares which can be issued at the price which we have decided in dutch auction you will be getting a percentage once you have that percentage then each investor will be getting according to that percentage so actually in question two investor a will subscribe 100 shares b will go for 220 and investor c will go for 180 so that is all about dutch auction we have seen what is dutch auction advantages disadvantages and two numerical questions on dutch auction as well in addition to that uh, the acc has obviously issued an article you should read that article in which they have discussed direct listing they have discussed spac special purpose acquisition uh, companies you should uh, read that also ipo is also already in the syllabus and little bit about esg you should read it and you should read a little bit about green financing as well so simply i would say and one more thing you should know uh, you should know the technique how do we value a loss making company if you come across a scenario where where is a company is a loss making company then how do we value a loss making company you should be having the answer of these questions as well in your mind if you have any question in your mind regarding anything you can always ask the question thank you very much for watching this lecture and instead of having a nice a day i would say have a nice life thank you very much for watching this lecture